Okay, so we were here, we were discussing arbitrage free valuation. I think it's getting. I don't even have a uh, We try to do this. Okay, now that's better. Okay, I'll just briefly clarify one point because I thought Sahil had uh, some discomfort with the point when I said that. Uh, or was it you or uh, one? What is the point? You don't even know what point I'm talking about before that you're saying no. Yeah. Okay, no, I just thought Sahil or somebody else was. When I said that the NPV in the NPV model, okay, uh, is uh, the structure of the model is uh, project cost plus ignoring signs, or you can just write it as pro I mean, your project uh, project fair value minus uh, project uh, project cost. Okay, so. Uh, project market price so my fair value versus market price you just write it like this okay so this is the correct formulation of the npv model now some people may get confused because they're saying that this this fair value component also has to be determined okay so the correct way to think about this is actually to say that the npv model remember even such a simple thing is actually even such a simple equation is a model if you just write npv as project fair value minus project cost that's also a model Okay, that's why. So the model doesn't have to be like over complicated with 20 simultaneous equations. Even this is a model because it fits the basic definition. What is the definition? Chada, what did we? How do we define a, a mathematical model? Everyone has forgotten. We are doing so much. Yeah, so it defines a specific mathematical relationship between inputs and outputs, a set of inputs and a set of outputs. Okay, simple definition, you must have the theoretical concept in your head clear. Okay, so that you can, otherwise some people might have said this is not a model because it's not maybe not complicated enough. Okay, so even this is the model. A X is equal to A minus B, that's also a model. Okay, is this clear? Well, people are not in agreement. It's not complicated enough. Does it describe a mathematical relationship between a set of inputs and a set of outputs? Right? Here the set of outputs has only one element and the set of inputs has two elements. Okay? So the way to think about it is that the NPV model is written like this. Now in order to determine one of the inputs to the NPV model, you have to separately run a separate model for the fair value of the project, which is only these terms here. Is this clear? You have to separately run a, uh, uh, you have to run a separate model before that, okay, as a preceding step, <coughs> where you can compute the fair value of the model, of the, of the project. Now that is a model for the fair value of the project. In that model, the endogenous variable will be the fair value of the project. Is this clear? Okay, so the output of that particular fair value of the project model, that output will later become an input in the NPV model. Are you following the structure? Yes, sir. Real, not convinced. Are you following? The correct way to think about it is like this. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Okay, that this is the stepwise. This is how you should think about it. Okay, so the output of one model becomes can become the input of another model. Okay, all right. So just wanted to clarify that. Now we'll go back to our discussion on arbitrage free valuation to complete the discussion. Okay, so I have added the uh, Bihar part of the uh, border restriction. So what we discussed is we found first. Let's understand what we did without any border restrictions, no restrictions on interstate trade, all right? So then uh, what we have is that the fair value, where are all the prices? Okay, 45, 20 and 65. So what we have to do is, so if we, if the question is, what is the, uh, actually the question should be re, um, rewritten like this. So these are the, this is the information given to you, 45, 20 and 75. So the question is, what is the fair value? Okay, the question is actually the more fundamental question is if you go back to this, which is our, we are trying to decide whether to buy or sell. Okay, so let's follow stepwise. It's a very simple example, but I'm running it once again through basic steps so that you understand exactly how the, what the framework is. And then even if it's more, comp if, even if you have a much more complicated example in real life, you will be able to follow the same steps. Okay, so the first question that arises is when you see this information here, whether to whether to buy or sell in the uh, when you're looking at the Delhi sugar price. Okay, should you sell or buy? Is this a, are you following what I'm doing? If it's too basic, okay, 
maybe it's too basic but let's follow just follow along because we want to make sure that the logical steps are clear in your mind so that later on when you have a more complicated example you can use the same logical steps are you following yes. what people are not nodding aggressively enough yes. Yes. Nikhil, your phone that's your phone okay all right so uh, so the first question is so basically let's restate the question in this way here it's written like this okay uh, let's put it this way so the question is okay uh, question one is to buy or sell uh, Delhi sugar okay is this clear Delhi sugar the market you're looking at whether to buy or to sell we go right from the very basics now this is your decision problem to buy or to sell now here let's assume that you don't believe in uh, the uh, value agnostic approach now this is a fundamentally subjective decision okay now your choice let's maybe make this a little bit smaller so you can see the full view of the table and what I'm actually meaning here uh, all right like it's like this okay so you have this and this problem can be solved in two basic ways there's no compulsion for you to choose either way you choose whatever method makes sense to you all right so in this case we are going to, since we want to discuss AFV we are going to forcibly assume that uh, the person who has to make this decision whether to buy or to sell Delhi sugar is not a believer in this approach he does not believe in the TA approach so he is going to use the value versus price comparison approach okay so in this case you should first check so when you're here your first goal should be to check whether a uh, when you're talking about buy or sell now you're going to use this method okay now you know that here there are two basic approaches within this within this part of the framework which is value versus price you can use either AFV or forecast based valuation is this clear yes. okay now your goal should always be to first check whether an AFV price is available whether you can determine AFV uh, in this manner the proper form of AFV whether actually there is a arbitrage possible okay so this is should be your first go investigation so that's what what you're doing is now is there the qu second question is therefore Okay. and here you're also you reject TA so that takes you to the FA price uh, straight away okay uh, <clears throat> all right so the next question is uh, is uh, is there um, um, Okay, is there, let's say, let's say, is there a true, uh, okay, what I mean by this, is there a true AFV, true is I'm using a, a short form for this, I've given you two types of AFV, one is property so called, which is really, this is true AFV, and this is actually, you can just call it false AFV for short, because we don't want to use such a big term, improperly so called, actually I borrowed this from John Austin and legal positivism but we don't need to worry about that let's make it false AFV and true AFV okay so now the first question is is there a true AF uh, can we compute a true fair value using AFV okay so here for this what you see is then what you do is you uh, find out is the second question is synthetic okay um, can we devise a synthetic uh, position or fair value okay so synthetic you already know what a synthetic is okay so this is all sounding a little bit complicated because I'm using the English language when you look at the actual step you will see it's very clear so when you see the up to question two is it clear to everyone you're just trying to figure out whether is, there is a true arbitrage free valuation price okay uh, whether we can true, uh, can compute a true fair value using AFV okay now what we do is so the second step is can you the second thing you try to think about is can you construct a synthetic position equivalent to the uh, can or fair V okay synthetic equivalent to these are the two words which are important equivalent to Delhi sugar okay so now we are looking at this market we are looking at this first market which is the Delhi sugar market where is it here we are looking at this market right now we are asking this question of uh, if we want to see if the, whether true AFB is possible in this situation okay what we are going to ask ourselves is 
can we create a synthetic equivalent position to a sick position in Delhi sugar you can one of the options you have is that you can buy or sell Delhi sugar directly yes or no yes, sir. you have the option why are people dozing off so early in the class just pay attention just be with me for a while because you need to I want to make sure that you go it seems very basic but I want to make sure that you understand the logical steps so that in a more complicated situation you can apply these logical steps so one option you have is you can buy or sell Delhi sugar at 75 remember 75 is a choice price you remember what choice price is? yes sir. yes are you sh you remember what choice price is yes sir. what is the choice price the, the <laughs> if if a dollar Swiss market maker is quoting you uh, a price for dollar Swiss okay it says 1.2710 choice what does that mean for you is that a bid or an offer what it's an offer Nikhil remember what we discussed yesterday about choice prices you've forgotten so why are you looking at your phone who will tell me what a choice price is <laughs> yes Sir, buy, and sell at same price. buy and sell at the same price so if you if it goes to you dollar swiss a price market makers quoting you 127.10 okay choice okay he will quote it as 1.27.10 and he will say ch ch for choice okay so he if the choice price means you can either that's both bid is equal to offer okay so you can either sell at that price or buy at that price okay so these are all choice prices 75 45 20 these are all choice prices okay so what we are trying to figure out one option to available to you there are always in this arbitrage free valuation framework you're always looking at two alternatives okay you'll be comparing two alternatives one alternative is to directly do the transaction in the delhi sugar market okay that is directly buy or sell in Delhi sugar market in the Delhi sugar market which is one option available to you you can do that okay but you also have access to the you also have information on the Patna price so what you see what Bola did yesterday was he figured out that it is actually cheaper to get sugar from uh, if you buy sugar in Patna at 45 dollar rupees and use a shipping cost of 20 rupees you can actually create a synthetic position in Delhi sugar at 65 rupees is this clear yeah. now you understand how the language is used okay so we are talking about a synthetic position why it's not a real position i mean it's not a natural position it's a synthetic position because it's not actually sugar which was originally there in delhi but you artificially brought it to delhi by buying in another location and bringing it here with the shipping cost so it's a synthetic position but it is once you bring it there it's the same thing okay and let's assume that these are all trading for 14 day forward delivery okay so you have some uh, we can look at um, we don't have to assume instantaneous so remember transaction dates and settlement dates yes. remember that yes. so transaction date and settlement date will be 14 t plus 14 okay settlement is equal to we write it simply as t plus since you're now all experts in finance we can write it as t plus 14 which means settlement is 14 day forward that gives you enough time to ship the sugar you don't have to make assumptions about uh, instantaneous uh, delivery and all that okay so now so you have two, two concepts you have a natural position in delhi sugar and you have now conceptualized a synthetic equivalent position okay the term is synthetic equivalent that you have to understand so by buying it in patna and shipping it across it's a synthetic equivalent okay so essentially the cost of so what we say is can we devise this is if if the answer is yes okay right then what will happen is this is not a question the cost of generating so here we are just writing down the basic theoretical steps which you can apply to any problem even a problem with like i said this one has only three moving parts okay uh, three part three moving parts here 20 uh, the transportation cost prices in patna and delhi you may have a bigger problem with 25 moving parts but you can still apply the same framework okay as long as you know how to create the exact synthetic position it has to be the same it has to have the same cash flows same consequences okay so here and same here we are assuming the same grade of sugar the cost of generating the or creating is a better word creating the synthetic okay so the cost of using creating the synthetic equivalent is 
is uh, let's call it the natural market the natural market here means I'm just contrasting uh, it with synthetic okay natural market here example is Delhi sugar okay right so here what we were trying to so follow the are you following the logical steps okay you see a normal price you see a price of 75 rupees for the Delhi sugar market and you don't know whether this is a price that should make you sell or should make you buy is this clear this is a basic decision problem all right okay so then what you do is you try to solve this problem using the AFV technique so which means you immediately start searching around for other market information that you have in this case you have information that there's sugar available in Patna for 45 rupees and transportation cost is 20 rupees and by looking at that information you can see your what you're really trying to see what you're really trying to see is to try to see if you can create a synthetic equivalent position to Delhi sugar okay so you see that you can create one at 65 rupees okay so therefore the answer is that here the, the, the point is that the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent position okay is the fair value for the natural market that is the fair value for the uh, price in Delhi okay you see this price in Delhi is 75 okay so understand what is you understand what is fair value fair value you understand okay so we are using fair value this is fair value using uh, AFP principles okay obviously the above I think I wrote this somewhere else uh, hmm. okay okay I already wrote this yesterday so I'm actually already I've written it twice okay let me just copy it from here so it, it may sound a little bit complicated okay uh, because I'm using the language like once again you said I'm using complicated language but the reason I'm using complicated languages there is certain lingo and finance that you guys have to be familiar with so the language has to be used in the correct way like words like synthetic equivalent okay when you're talking to people in finance in the financial markets you have to use these kind of terms you can't just use whatever term you want so that's why I'm making sure and then you have to use the language in the correct way okay so therefore because at the end of the day you are communicating okay so you have to use the right uh, technical terms and you have to craft the sentence in the right way so that people understand clearly what you are talking about there's no confusion about what you're saying okay right cost of creating the is the fee yeah just nothing much here uh, Okay, so is anybody finding this uh, confused? I mean, I don't know why everybody has switched off if so early in the class. Um, what happened? Tanuj, are you following what is being discussed? Some, some. Okay, there is a new uh, word that you've devised. Okay, you're making contribution. No, why? Uh, Tushar, what is happening? Are you following? If you're not following, see, you've got to ask me because this is a basic step. These are theoretical steps that you have to follow for any problem. Okay. So understand this concept since we have got into this discussion I want to at least make sure that people understand how arbitrage pre-valuation is, is, uh, is uh, done okay how AFV is done that's why I'm going from the very beginning so that there's no confusion okay so please make sure that you guys are all following along okay Imani are you follow are you with us why don't you come uh, your seat next to you is not usable Okay, so why don't we bring Himani here? Why don't you come in? Okay. Hmm? No, she's saying it, the seat doesn't work. It works. Okay, good. Himani, come and sit next to Gunjan. Okay, so let's get everybody up here so that it's, it's only the first class. People are already falling asleep. Okay, so uh, okay, so let's follow the logic once again from the very beginning. Okay, 
you have a basic decision problem. You see these prices here in these two different markets. You see these prices as far as the Delhi market is concerned. You are not sure whether you should buy or sell. Okay, let's take it from the very beginning. You have a decision problem. Should I buy it or sell it? Okay, so you have decided to solve this decision problem using this approach. Okay, and here what I'm telling you is always look to see if you can uh, create a true AFP price. Is there a true AFP uh, price that is available in the market uh, that can be created? Okay, so what you're trying to see is if there is there a true opportunity for uh, let's put it this way. Is there a true opportunity for uh, is there, is there a true fair value using AFP? Later on, we'll redefine this a little more clearly. So this is your question. Now, how do you calculate that? How do you how do you uh, sort of uh, answer that question? Is there a true fair value using AFP? The straight away the, uh, the simple rule is look for synthetic equivalents. Okay, <coughs> look for market prices ar around you, whatever market you can access. Okay, is there a synthetic equivalent? You look around and you see that there is one because you can buy the sugar in Patna and ship it off to Delhi and that will create the same result because once you get the sugar in Delhi it's the same grade of sugar and it is indistinguishable from sugar that is bought in Delhi. Is this is clear. So it's a synthetic equivalent. It's synthetic because it was not originally there. You brought it here artificially. Is this is clear. Okay. Now you find so then what we are saying is the rule is that yeah, where's the question? Yeah. Can we devise? Yeah. So now the rule is essentially the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent. What is the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent? 65. 65. The cost of creating the synthetic equivalent is 65. Does everyone agree? Yes, sir. Okay. So that is the if the whatever is the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent. Remember, it has to be equivalent. Equivalent word is very important. It has to have the same effect. Okay. If you get it only to Ghaziabad, that's not equivalent. Okay. You have to bring it to the same location. So then, uh, so now the, it's a synthetic equivalent. So the cost of creating so the principle of AFB essentially is. So try to understand the because the AFP is after all it stands for arbitrage free valuation. It is a valuation principle, just like when you do this kind of forecast based valuation of a project. The valuation principle is that the fair value of the project is equal to the PV of the sum of the PVs of all the future cash flows. Okay, that is the principle that you are using. That's why you write that equation and compute the value of that equation. Right? That is the principle that you are using. So here the principle is that. The cost of creating the synthetic equivalent is the fair value of is the fair value for the natural market. Natural market here is Delhi sugar. Okay, uh, so uh, this is not a very elegant term, natural market, but I've used it to contrast it with the synthetic market. I'm contrasting it with synthetic, so I'm using the word like natural. Okay, so in this case, the natural market is Delhi sugar. So the fair value, the above fair value, is the fair value using um, AFB principles. Okay, this is where I'm using the language. You have to understand. In the language also okay so this fair value that you computed so what we are saying is we are saying two things we are saying the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent is the fair value for the uh, natural market which is the Delhi sugar market okay or the fair value for sugar in the Delhi market okay and how did I compute this fair value I computed this fair value using AFB principles is this clear okay this is how you should talk about it Okay, I computed this fair value using AFP principles. Just like when I gave you the example, when you compute the value of a project, you use certain principle. That is, the value of the project is equal to the sum of the NPVs of all the all the things, right? Okay, all right. Okay, so um, so this much, this this clear. Okay, the F, above FB F, is the fair value uh, using A, AFP principles of Delhi Sugar. Okay, does anybody have any confusion at this stage? Please let me know that we should make sure that everybody understand this. This is a very important principle in finance how to do arbitrage free valuation. Okay, so the, the, the key word here is the synthetic equivalent concept. Okay, and the cost of the synthetic equivalent becomes the fair value of the natural market. Okay, is that clear? This is the basic simple principle. So you can apply it no matter the same principle will apply no matter how complicated the situation. You may have options, swaps, this, that, all kinds of complicated instruments, but the basic logic is always the same. Because you might have 27 different instruments, it will take you longer to compute the synthetic, the cost of creating the synthetic equivalent, but the basic process will not change. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, so what we are saying is arbitrage free. We have already written these steps here. Doesn't matter. I'll clean up the notes later on. Um, yeah, this this is fine. 
calculate fair value using AFP compare now we are coming back so now that we have found the we have still not completed the whole uh, series of steps okay so we computed the fair value using AFP principles now we come to the next step so we got this calculate the fair value using AFP now we are going to compare the fair value to the market price so what is the fair value here what is the fair value Fair value is not 75. 65 is the fair value. Why are people getting confused about such a simple question? Everybody should be clear. 65 is the fair value is what you computed. Okay. So because I want to make sure that the reason I'm going through all these logical steps is I want to make sure that there is no, you understand that there is nothing arbitrary going on. We are following the very same rule that we declared earlier, which is what are we going to do? We are going to compute value versus price. We are in this box, value versus price box. So we are going to compute the fair value and value means fair value. We are going to compute the fair value. And then what are we going to do? We are going to compare it to the price. Okay. Now we've already computed the fair value is 65. Okay. And then the price, we compare fair value to market price. Okay. And the market price in this case is greater or higher, lesser is greater. The market price is 75 and the fair value is 65 so therefore our decision is sell in the natural market we will be selling selling okay so this this question this answer which bola gave very quickly uh yesterday that he's going to sell the delhi sugar which what we have gone through right now is actually the thinking process that must must have gone through his head to arrive at that answer are you following now okay because obviously as human beings we are able to think very quickly and sometimes we don't uh, think about all the logical steps that are involved in coming to that decision is this clear now this is how you would program it into a computer if you had to come pro program the logic into a computer you would program it in this way all the steps would be given because the computer doesn't know anything is this clear okay now you have understood AFP principles okay so the other thing that we need to learn at this stage is this term called classical riskless arbitrage okay this is a term that we are going to now refer to as only as cra okay to avoid uh, mentioning this big expression all the time okay so just read cra what you have actually done essentially what bola was proposing to do yesterday is to ship the sugar from patna buy it in patna instantaneously buy it in patna and then ship it across at the same moment tie up the shipping arrangements and then instantaneously at the same moment also sell to the Delhi dealer okay at 75 rupees and lock in a profit of 10 rupees so what I'm saying is that what Bola was proposing to do yesterday is engage in he was actually engaging in uh, or he was proposing to engage in classical riskless arbitrage okay so now read the definition for a while please make sure again you understood the transaction but you have to understand it theoretically which means you need to know the exact the you need to know the keywords you need to know exactly how the language is used okay because so many of you are very sloppy in the use of language that is not acceptable for an mba student okay all right guys let's have a look at this just read this the new term here is law of one price. We'll come to how the law of one price uh, comes about. Okay. Let's highlight some keywords. Instantaneous riskless profit. Here risk we are going to define, we are going to qualify riskless. Okay. Uh, by riskless, what do we mean? risk stands what does op risk stand for operational, operational risk okay so operational risk can remain at it may actually happen that you've got the Delhi dealer on the phone and uh, your partners has in front of you has the Patna dealer on the phone 
and just instantaneously in a millisecond you may do the transaction but the communication link may break down at the other end so these even while executing cra there may be some of these operational type of risks okay even later on operational risk can remain in cra okay no remaining market risk operational risk can remain can remain okay communication links may break down or uh, shipment in this example because there's a 14 day delivery period so shipment may uh, go awry for some reason okay shipment may be damaged to the goods or all kinds of risks are available uh, are possible in shipment okay shipment can go awry in some way or the other all right are you following what i'm saying all kinds of problems can arise in the shipment okay so uh, then so this can happen so operational risk can remain all right credit risk also remains okay because the partner dealer you have remember transaction date is today but the settlement date is t plus four uh, t plus 14 all right so you are buying from the partner dealer so you may have remitted the money to him okay you may have made arrangements but he may not ship he may fail to deliver that is a different thing from the operational risk that something goes wrong with the shipment halfway through all right that's a different thing that's operational risk okay some damage to the goods or whatever but the guy himself may be over smart he may decide not to honor his contract pocket your money then you have to go and sue him in court okay so it's not an easy process now that's credit risk okay so these problems can still remain so when you do cra uh, when we say because typically the when you look at a typical textbook definition of cra okay you will not find these kinds of qualifications most of the textbook definitions will only say riskless profit okay but they don't make a clear uh, they don't make the finer distinction between market risk operational risk credit risk so you can see here that there is uh, this example that you saw okay where you sell in delhi at 75 and arrange to have it shipped from patna and earn a 10 rupee profit okay if everything goes okay which is what normally happens okay you don't have manifestation of operational risk or credit risk every day in the markets okay so you understand the difference between these types of risks you remember these types of risks yes, yes. market risk uh, operational yes, risk yes. credit yes. risk okay yes. okay yes. legal and regulatory yes. risk okay so that one of the reasons we have uh, dis these kinds of distinctions okay so what kind of legal risk? sorry so what kind of legal risk in this kind of risk? in this case the legal risk might be things like you know if you don't pay the uh, you know uh, later on you don't pay the gst or things like that that would be an example and later on you have to pay a fine for that because the other guy may not have done something that he was supposed to do legally those kind of transactions or you don't pay the uh, now you don't have that interstate uh, duties anymore with the new gst scheme so so those are the kinds of legal risks that might arise in this case okay so okay uh, so the point to understand about cra is that when we say riskless we only mean that there is no remaining market risk okay operational risk can remain credit risk can also remain okay but in general operational risk and credit risk do not manifest every day in the business world they happen from time to time okay so it's a lumpy kind of uh, distribution for these kinds of risks but market risk is happening every day because prices are moving around all the time all right so in this case if nothing goes wrong there's nothing there's no operational risk pro operational problem with the shipment there is no default by the other party there's no credit risk okay if nothing goes wrong on these fronts then you have locked in a 10 rupee profit okay so this is what riskless means that instantaneously you lock in the 10 rupee profit assume and which you'll be able to enjoy assuming that no other type of risk creates a problem are you following what i'm saying yes. okay all right so this is what is meant so the term that you need to be aware of is cra what you have done in this case is that you have engaged in cra you sold in Delhi at 75 and created a synthetic equivalent long position. So in Delhi, your position is short. In the Delhi market, in the natural Delhi market, your position is short. And in the synthetic, in the synthetic equivalent, your position is long. Are you following this? Now remember the position logic, your concept of positions, long and short. Okay. So the, you went short in the Delhi market. So your position is short in the natural Delhi market and your underlying the synthetic position is synthetic equivalent position is long. So remember again, it seems very basic, but please remember these uh, frameworks because in more complicated situations, it will help you when you have the framework clear in your mind. You created a long position to offset a short position. Is everyone clear? Are you following? Okay. 
So this is what is meant by so it's important to understand what classical riskless arbitrage is because okay we are uh, why are we using this state term okay credit risk also remains in CRA credit risk remains mean does not necessarily mean that the credit risk will manifest itself but you have to be aware that until the guy actually delivers 14 days later theoretically he could default that's what I mean by credit risk remains that doesn't mean that he will default okay all right so why is CRA important because important to to distinguish between uh, well let's just uh, between CRA and other um, situations okay incorrectly described um, using the word this is very common in the industry so you have to be aware of this problem incorrectly incorrectly described using the word arbitrage um, when <coughs> the latter are not CRA are you able to follow what I'm writing here that the reason I have made this uh, I the reason we have created this concept it actually it exists in the market if you say classical riskless arbitrage and you explain what you mean uh, people will understand but uh, there is a tendency in the industry to use the word arbitrage very loosely okay people are not very careful they use the word arbitrage loosely and so they apply it to situations which is uh, which are actually not which is why now it's important to define something called classical the reason I'm using the word classical is kind of old okay the old concept of arbitrage which is there must be a locking in of a riskless profit okay ideally without a capital outlay okay simultaneously selling and buying the same asset okay two different counterparties all right this is the crux of classical riskless arbitrage that is you must be able to uh, assuming that no other type of risk manifests itself your profit should be locked in guaranteed okay no no uh, confusion about it okay so the problem that we have so this when you can do this you call it CRA okay why is it important to define CRA because you have lots of other let's look at this situation have you guys heard of this term called merger arbitrage no you haven't heard of merger arbitrage okay so what is merger arbitrage merger arbitrage is um, buying stocks of you know target and acquirer yes, sir. you understand target and acquirer okay uh, buying stocks of um, let's say companies that are potential targets okay before so the sentence is not very well constructed but uh, you'll know what I mean before uh, merger I'm not writing full English sentences before merger is officially announced okay so even after the merger is officially announced there is a risk because the merger may not close right you're aware of regulatory hurdles and mergers Yes, right like AT&T I think that is still being litigated AT&T Time Warner the government of the, the US government has lost the first round but they are going to go to the Supreme Court possibly okay on this all right maybe or I don't know which stage it is it they might go to a higher court okay so uh, there is litigation so technically you can't really be sure that the merger will go through because they might win at the higher court so there are legal and regulatory so there are two things in mergers one is the official announcement of the merger and then the after, even after that it's not a hundred percent sure because the regulators may clamp down they may uh, forbid that merger all right so therefore uh, there is there are two levels of uncertainty now what these guys do the guys who do merger arbitrage is a very old business on Wall Street okay so you had uh, people like Robert Rubin who's a US Treasury Secretary from uh, his ex Goldman Sachs he was uh, in merger arbitrage he was heading the merger arbitrage department so what merger arbitrage is doing is let's say we assume that uh, let's say some company is going to be bought up okay let's say you can just target let's say before the idea versus Vodafone uh, uh, merger was announced 
okay let's say you had a hunch based on what was happening in the industry let's say you had a hunch that idea would be taken over okay let's say you had a hunch nothing has come out officially these are just rumors in the market and you do your own analysis and you think that this stock is maybe a little undervalued and if uh, vodafone takes over this uh, company then they will get a lot of synergistic benefits and things like that so you basically have a suspicion that idea might be taken over nothing has come out officially so now you go and accumulate a big chunk of idea stock in the hope that once the merger is announced obviously the merger will typically have to be at a premium to the market price you remember that most when you look at the real life mergers most of them have to be announced at a if the market price is 32 dollars you can't just expect people to sell it at 30 the shareholders to sell at 32 you'll have to offer something like 65 or something like that okay or 55 or something like that some solid premium to the market price usually it's around at least a 20 percent premium to the market price okay so therefore you know that if the merger actually is get uh, is announced mm -hmm. then you'll make a big profit because the stock price will jump are you following the logic yes sir okay so this this business is called so you're learning something new about mergers as well so there's this this is actually a a, a kind of speculative activity okay uh, uh carried out by the banks and investment banks so these uh, this activity is called merger arbitrage it is also called risk arbitrage risk arbitrage you can see already is a kind of oxymoron this is like a tall shot okay it's like a tall short person okay or it is also called risk arbitrage okay or sometimes people might just say risk arm instead of using the full word arbitrage they might just say risk arm so if somebody tells you that i work in the risk arm department at morgan stanley what that means is this is what he does for a living he goes around hunting for companies which he thinks might get bought up might become targets in potential mergers then he will accumulate the stocks they have some capital at their disposal they will start accumulating those stocks in the hope that the official merger is announced and then the stock will jump and then they'll sell it and make a profit are you following this logic this is the merger arbitrage business also called risk arb or risk arb arbitrage okay now tell me is this cra emani yes. where is the mic yes. give her the mic does this seem like cra to you yes one minute i want to know himani's answer you understood now make sure that you guys i've explained about merger arbitrage it's classical risk you understood what cra is okay what gola was proposing yesterday right now my question to you is is merger arbitrage you notice that the industry is using the word arbitrage okay so my question to you is is merger arb cra yes okay but what uh, why is it yes why is it cra what is the hallmark of cra okay one minute who else uh, agrees with himani i think from the, yeah you also agree that it is cra well, it's, uh, similar to no no not similar i'm saying is it the same as cra yes. same means equivalent yes. exact identical no similar yes it is cra you would call it cra yes you also would call it CRA. Anybody else? So we have so far. We have, the question is clear. Is the question clear to everybody? We have described what merger arbitrage is. Now my question is: Is merger arbitrage CRA? You can read the definition of CRA here. Yes. Anybody else? Nobody else has any view. Either yes, no, agree, disagree, nothing. No view. What is not clear here? classic cra is clear you understood what is meant by cra okay cra is very important to understand because you need to uh, be aware of this important type of transaction because it is can it can be used as a valuation principle okay this logic uh, the create creation of a synthetic equivalent and the cost of creating that so cra is very important to understand and also merger arbitrage is a transaction that you should understand what these people do in merger arbit departments okay so now my question cra anybody else anybody with a strong view yes no question is is merger arb an example of cra anybody no one now it should be very simple i mean if i hold a mango in one hand and an apple in one hand i'm asking you the mango equivalent to an apple you should be able to answer the answer is no because you know what a mango is and you know what an apple is okay so that means if you are not able to answer that that means you either you don't know what cra is or you don't know what a merger arb is or both 
Where is the problem? Okay. Yes. Use the mic. Okay. So you have a different view. You say you are saying that merger app is not CRA. Because Why? Because CRA, it is pretty that they have displaced profit. But in the merger acquisition, they can have the loss also after taking the shares of the companies. If they are taking after merger, by chance they can get the loss also. How would they have a loss? Come on, let him finish. Let him finish. So they can have the loss if the Be quiet, guys. Everybody else should be quiet. Yes. If the company is the share price is same or after the merger, the merging company is agreeing the losses. Like the reason for which the merger has taken place has not been successful. So they can get the Okay, so the rationale for the merger. Okay. So I think anybody else wants to answer? That's it? Nobody else has a view? Okay, fine. So Tanuj's answer is correct, but your uh, and the reason you gave is also potentially correct. I mean it's not the best possible reason because see if you understand merger arbitrage these guys are not going to wait what he's saying is after the merger like the TXU merger after the merger the merger the merged company might go bankrupt because the deal doesn't work out as planned okay you don't get the synergies that you expected like what happened in AOL Time Warner and all that in the 90s uh, stock market uh, bubble okay but the what merger up guys are not going to wait around for so long what they are going to do is as soon as the merger is announced okay either that when the stock price will pop as soon as the merger is announced the stock price will pop a little bit it may not go to the uh, merger price okay if the merger price is 20 percent higher than the market price it may not go directly to the merger price because there are some risks even though the official announcement is remember i told you the risks of regulators yes. regulatory risk the merger may not get approved so that's why more in many cases you'll see that the target maybe the share price is announced that the merger will go through at 65 dollars a share but before the merger maybe the price was trading at say 35 okay now after the merger is announced it will shoot up from 35 but it may not go all the way to 65 it may go to about 62 or something because there's some risk that that 62 65 difference is reflecting the risk that the merger may not be approved okay what happened why is everybody looking uh, uh, are you following okay so i need to see engagement from you guys i need to you see you guys looking at me and nodding aggressively you know <laughs> so so that i get some kind of affirmation that you know whatever i'm teaching uh, you're able to register i mean it's registering in your head right so therefore uh, merger arbitrage guys are not going to wait around for that long usually what they will do is as soon as the price pops some of them will sell out and some of them might tender it to the actual uh, final closing okay usually they form a block they have some little more negotiating power so the uh, acquiring company has to deal with these this is one of the problems in MAs that the acquiring because risk curve has become so popular that one of the things that the target company has to deal with is these groups of there's like a cartel of these merger up guys who are holding huge chunks of stock okay and they are now trying to uh, arm twist the acquirer for a higher price okay so this all this stuff is also being played but you can think of the simplest possible way for a merger up guy to make a profit is that he buys the stock before the merger is announced okay when nobody knows anything and he buys the stock and then once the merger is announced there's a pop in the stock price okay he shoots up 15 to 18 percent and then he sells into that and makes a profit but Tarun is correct uh, Tarun is correct in pointing out that merger arm is not CRA because it's not a riskless profit you can lose money in many ways if the merger does not is not announced then the target companies the potential target companies if there's no announcement okay let's say you bought idea in the hope that Vodafone will bid for it but if the Vodaf if the Vodafone bid never comes through, there's no official announcement. Then eventually the idea price might stop uh, start sliding down, because you're anyway saying that company is not very viable on its own. Are you following the logic? Yes, sir. So there is a risk in merger arm, because you are taking you are actually taking an open long position, just a straight long position, and you're riding on it. So it is not CRA because CRA means instantaneous riskless earning or let's say locking in Sorry. maybe earning better to use locking in you understand what is meant by locking in you understand what is meant by locking in yes 
okay so then if you uh, so some people don't understand so locking in means in this example okay if you see here in this example what are we doing the cost of the synthetic position is 65 the cost of the synthetic long position is 65 and we can see a choice price at 75 in the Delhi market in the natural market so we sell here we create a natural short position and we offset it with a synthetic long position and we have locked in a 10 rupee profit locked in in the sense that I have not yet earned the profit I will earn it only after 14 days assuming nothing goes wrong okay after the delivery happens then the sugar positions will cancel out long against short and I will have a, a outflow of 75 rupees when I pay in Delhi and uh, the when the Patna fellow pay uh, add to the Patna fellow I will have an inflow in Delhi okay I'll have an inflow in Delhi and in Patna the dealer I'll have to pay him 65 rupees so the actual realization of the profit is on the settlement date is everyone clear about this okay what is the problem here why are you looking back no you should not be asking for water you should ask for uh, you should uh, I didn't want to open the sheet you ask for water you raise your hand and then you ask me well I don't know what you're asking for and I'm going to deduct marks for Sahil also because earlier I saw him looking I didn't want to open the sheet at that time I was saw him communicating with somebody we may not even get a chance to give you an opportunity to earn positive point. I don't know how I'm going to deal with this, these scores. We'll figure out. One sec. This will go. No, no. You were you were communicating with somebody there. I don't know who it was. Maybe Shivani or somebody. I saw it. I didn't open. I didn't want to open the sheet at that time. Talking is not. He was also not talking. I'm not interested in who is talking because I can't even hear whether you're talking or not. I'm just interested in any kind of behavior which is any kind of communication with anybody else. The communication was not even verbal or non-verbal? Yes. No, no, it was non-verbal. <laughs> it was very much non-verbal. It may not have been verbal, but it is non-verbal. Okay. So I should not have to do this. If you need water, you raise your hand just like an exam. Okay because we don't do it this way then everything will collapse as it is people are all half dead everybody is I don't know where you guys are mentally okay so if you don't follow it is your responsibility to ask me questions if you don't follow anything I'm saying okay you don't have a right to just switch off and uh, you know go off on your own uh, you go into Samadhi you know? <laughs> so okay what were we saying Login. Lock in. lock in the profit so what I mean by locking in the profit means that I have not earned the profit so in fact I should change this definition instead of saying earning I should only say act of locking in because in many cases you don't actually uh, earn it immediately okay uh, only in a cash transaction uh, and even then you have to wait for the settlement to go and go through so we should not say earning we should say locking in by locking in now you understand what is locking in in that I have locked in I've done all the trust so remember transaction date what happens is the terms of the contract the contractual liabilities of the parties are crystallized on the transaction date how did we discuss transaction date versus settlement dates right so every transaction in a financial market is a contract to exchange assets right so the contractual liabilities to uh, exchange the assets is formed up on the transaction date itself once the contract is formed you have a liability to for perform the contract but the actual delivery and the ex actual exchange of assets will happen on the settlement date okay so until the actual settlement date happens you have not really earned that profit okay in the cash sense you have not earned it but you have locked it in assuming that no uh, mess up happens on credit risk or operational risk then you will earn it is this clear this is what is meant by locking in so CRA is not uh, I mean merger of is not CRA right 
Okay, so merger arb is not. Is everyone clear about that now? Yes, sir. Because what you're doing in merger arb is you're just buying the shares of Idea when you just have a suspicion that Vodafone might take over this company, but nothing officially has been announced. So what? Who knows? I mean, maybe eventually the official announcement may not come. All right. So if it doesn't come, the stock price may go down, and you have already gone long. So merger arb is actually a straight speculative long position in the potential target company. straight that's what it is okay so it is not cra because there is a lot of market risk that still remains okay that is the way to talk about it that it is still have a market risk that remains is everyone clear about this yes there are two reasons behind it first is that it's not instant uh, instantaneous yeah it's and it's not you are not yeah there is a risk yeah and market risk remains you have instantaneous riskless profit means you have no remaining market like after doing this transaction if you are doing a true cri transaction like what bola had proposed yesterday in delhi versus patna sugar what he had proposed was a true cri transaction because once you complete that transaction no market risk remains but in merger arm you have uh, much remaining market risk because you are just sitting on a straight long position that's all okay uh and uh, so that's what it is okay so that's why i'm making this distinction uh, it's important to understand this the very clearly what exactly cra is because you will see many other examples i'll give you some other examples also later but this is one example merger arbitrage where the market is using the word arbitrage but this is not really cra so it is actually according to me a irresponsible use of the word arbitrage but the market does this all the time okay because they don't really think about you know exact terminology and consistency and all these aspects uh, they just coin something and just move on okay all right so now this is clear now so we have understood what cra is okay now when i say that um, all i'm saying here is Okay. Now you notice that here, uh, what I've done is I'm actually I'm going to remove futures from here. I'm just actually there is a little bit of uh, very marginal uh, risk in futures, so we should not use futures. I'm just going to use uh, FX cross rates. These are the pure examples of uh, of CRA. So AFV properly so called essentially means that where you can actually do the CRA. what you have done here let's understand this and so and what we are saying is that the option models all option valuation models they are actually uh, they they pretend to use afv principles but these are actually not uh, cases of afv truly because the cra cannot be done okay what do i mean by cra cannot be done here's one example okay so it is not possible to perform cra in these situations okay so let me write it here then i'll explain what i mean so these so here the actual market price can't be forced to converge to uh the fair value uh using which is calculated afp fair value okay when i say afp fair value means fair value computed using afp principles okay so let me just explain here a little bit one more thing which we can highlight here which is uh so afp just understand at this page because essentially you cannot uh, force the uh, the actual market price to converge to the fair value okay using this principle now let let's let me show you what what i mean by that this is also an important thing to understand 
Okay, now here go back to this example. Right, now what is Bola doing? He's taking, initially we said he's going to deal at 10 kilos of sugar. But let's assume that he is very greedy and he sees this opportunity to make lots of money. Okay, so he says, why should I deal at 10 kilos? Let me deal in uh, 100 quintals. Okay, let me deal at 100 quintals or maybe even 500 quintals, as big a size as possible. Okay, because anyway, I'm locking in a riskless profit. So let me deal in like 500 quintals or something. So imagine that. So what is he doing in the Delhi market? Is he buying or selling? <laughs> selling. Okay. So now what is happening when Bola comes in to sell 500 quintals? What is that creating? Excess demand or excess supply? Excess supply. Excess supply. This is clear. Excess supply in the Delhi market. And Cetrus Paribus, when excess supply hits the market, what happens to the price? Price falls. Okay. So what you see is a tendency that uh, and uh, so if the price will tend to move lower from 75 yes. okay so after seeing Bola now Cheddar will also get excited and he will also come in with his 500 quintals so more and more people get into the game and they start selling that creating excess supply excess supply means Cetrus Paribus price must fall okay so therefore the, there is a downward pressure on Delhi prices are you following the logic okay there's a downward pressure now similarly what is happening in Patna Bola has to buy in Patna, Chanda also has to buy in Patna. So everybody who is selling in Delhi is also buying in Patna. So there is excess demand in the Patna market. So what will happen to the price and the rise? Okay. So what you see is eventually there is going to be a convergence. Can you see between the two prices? Okay. So whenever you have a situation where it is possible to execute CRA. Executing CRA in this situation means you should be able to lock in instantaneously buy from this guy arrange the shipping and sell to this guy okay and you just have only operation no market risk is left in the transaction okay so if everybody starts to whenever there's such an opportunity to do true true CRA this is real CRA okay classical riskless arbitrage can be done okay uh, we can just call it CRA that means true CRA. I mean really can do the arbitrage okay and so when this happens what will happen is that there will be upward pressure on prices at Patna and so the prices will tend to converge okay it will tend to converge so eventually the arbitrage will disappear can you see that yes eventually the arbitrage will disappear so if it comes anywhere and even if it comes to 65 now there's no more profit if the delhi price drops to 65 in the meantime this would also have risen a little bit okay so therefore already the profit will disappear are you following the logic yes, sir. okay what will happen okay so this is why this is called the law of one price the classical riskless arbitrage transaction which you do okay this essentially ensures that this law will always prevail okay whenever it is possible to do this CRA okay whenever it is actually possible to do this CRA the law of one price will prevail okay this is an important term in economics so this is what when you hear this term law of one price this is what it means that the same the same asset cannot have uh, two different prices in two markets which can be connected to each other in some way okay but connected to each other means you can actually talk to people in Patna and you can arrange the shipping from Patna to Delhi okay so if these two markets can be connected in some way okay effectively to make sure that CRA is possible then you cannot have two different prices like 45 and 75 prevailing in the two different markets eventually the prices will converge together this is this clear yeah. and this is what is meant by law of one price Ishan are you following okay so now therefore this is what is meant by the law of one price so eventually it will make the prices converge now see the problems okay what do i mean by why do i keep on saying when you can actually do the cra actually do the same i mean there's some execution to be done here you need to call uh, call up the guy buy from him you need to uh, send to the delhi dealer you need to arrange the shipping and everything has to go smoothly uh, that means the delivery has to go smoothly okay so now here the problem is we said here there is no border restrictions on on the trade okay now suddenly if we say that there is a ban on interstate trade now if we put a ban on interstate trade now what happens can you do the CRA no. you can't do the CRA because now the markets are no longer connected because you cannot ship the sugar from there to here okay so so yeah so we are giving this example as a crude kind of example but in real life when you look at uh, possibilities of doing CRA in connected in potentially connected markets you have to basically think in this manner 
is there any kind of obstacle to my executing the CRA? Okay, there may be some restrictions on borrowing. The government may have put restrictions on borrowing against bonds or maybe there's a capital control problem. You can't trade in currencies. Okay, so you have to in real life what you have to look at is more complicated examples. But essentially what your brain is asking is, is there any kind of obstacle to my executing the CRA smoothly? Are you following the logic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So is there any kind of restriction on uh, 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 obstruction to my following the CRA, uh, executing the CRA? If you have this, then what happens is CRA breaks down. CRA breakdown. Okay. Let me call it breaks down. CRA breaks down. Okay. So now what happens is if you go back to this question, this question number two, you were trying to see, you were trying to see whether it is possible to get a AFP price. Okay. Whether it's possible to get an AFP price for Delhi sugar. Now earlier the answer to that question was correct. Uh, yes. Okay. No. There is a true fair value using AFV because you could have executed the arbitrage. Now that we have put a ban on interstate trade. Now the answer to that question is no. This is clear. Now you can't actually find out an AFV fair value because the arbitrage cannot be executed. Okay. This is clear yes, sir. because you have put up obstruction. So what we mean essentially by AFV is it is arbitrage free valuation. Now, if you go back to the earlier uh, situation where there was no ban, okay, when there was no ban, when you were allowed to uh, trade freely, then you were able to execute the CI. So, what you were saying is AFP price, the AFP price in Delhi is 65. The fair value using AFP principles is 65, okay. If, why, why do we say fair value using AFP principles? Because that at the at the fair value of 65 okay there is no possibility of arbitrage if the price was equal to the fair value of 65 then there is no possibility of arbitrage is that clear yes sir. because yes, sir. The, if the price is equal to the fair value time up yes sir good god <laughs> okay so I uh, let me let me, one minute. I don't think it's time up. Yes. One minute. Okay, guys. All right, fine. But have you understood what we discussed? These are very important valuation principles. Okay. Uh, at least we should make sure that I don't know how the time flies in this class.